So, so let's look at uh, what happens if you use the polar transform along with the channel. Okay. So here's an example. I've shown eight bits here. Eight could be any n. I've, I've used n equals eight for illustration, but it could be any other n. Okay. So you have eight bits coming in. You use the polar transform G8. You get eight outputs. Okay. So these outputs could be anything, and usually you can you can denote it as x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6 x7, x8. So, these are 8 bits and then you can transmit them through BPSK, AWGN. What is BPSK? Once again, 0 goes to plus 1, 1 goes to minus 1 and what is AWGN? It is S plus uh, noise, right? Right. So, noise is uh, normal with mean 0 and variance sigma square, some sigma square. So, you create this noise, you get received values. Okay. So, this is how a polar transform could potentially be used in the BPSK, AWGN channel. AWGN channel and then uh, this Rn is the received vector. This is just notation for the received vector. Okay. It is fine, we used it, it is just an invertible transform, but why would you use it? What is the point of using a polar transform before a channel? So, it turns out if you do not use the polar transform, every bit sort of goes through the same channel in some way. Okay. So, there is nothing much maybe you can do. The polar transform combines these bits and gives us one uh, some sort of a reordering or changes the channel in some way you can view it in a different way okay so this notion of looking at individual bit channels after the polar transform is the key innovation in polar codes and it turns out those channels are vary a lot in terms of quality okay so that's the next picture so this picture is easy enough there's nothing much going on you have so many bits coming in you do the polar transform you can do it for any n right i've shown it for n equals 8 you can do it for n equals 1024 also you have 1024 bits coming in you hit it with the polar transform you get outputs you do the bps kwg and you get received back okay now what what is the effect that this has how do you view this in a polarization point of view here is the picture okay so this picture is the central idea behind polarization uh, once again we will not go deep into the theory of this picture except that we will present that from a high level to understand what is going on. Okay. So, it turns out after polarization you can sort of decompose or view what has happened in terms of what is going on to the individual bits in a sequential way. Okay. So, you can convert the n channels that you had into uh, n combined channels that you had in the polarization after when you did polarization and split them up sort of into individual bit channels. And the first bit channel is defined as follows. You have E1 going in, this is the input to the first ch bit channel and the output is the entire received vector Rn. Okay, remember once again, the entire received vector. This is the first bit channel, split bit channel. This is just a definition at this point. Okay, I am defining the first bit channel to have U1 as the input and the entire received vector as the output. Okay, So, I am reordering or uh, viewing the previous channel. So, in the previous picture, we had this kind of a picture. I am seeing this in a different way. Okay, Remember, I have got all the bits, all the received values at the output. Okay, And remember, the first bit would have affected all these bits in some way. So, all the received values will have some information about the first bit. Okay, So, it is not wrong to view it this way. Okay, So, we will take input as u1 and the bit channel, I will imagine, has a huge output, has all the outputs together the entire received vector collector together that is the output. Okay. Now, I will define sort of a second bit channel which has input as u2 which is the second bit, but look at the output here pay attention particularly the Rn is fine. Okay. So, you might say the entire received vector is there, but to this I will add u1 as one of the outputs of this bit channel. Okay. So, now at this point this is not a real output. Okay. Why is that? Because the channel is not giving me u1. Okay, the channel only gives me Rn. Okay, I will imagine that somehow I have this u1. Okay, and we'll see how to create this u1 in the actual physical channel. It turns out you can create a good estimate for this u1 in some way and cleverly use it and get uh, this effect of channel polarization. But at this point, I'm defining the second bit channel as input u2 and having output as the entire received vector and the previous bit u1 as one of the outputs okay it's just a definition next comes the third bit channel so here i'll go even little bit further 
Okay. So, I have the entire R n as the output, u 3 is the input again. Okay. Entire R n is the output along with that I will say both u 1 and u 2 I already have at the output. Okay. Once again these are not real outputs at this point, but I mean just carry along with me we will see later on how to get some substitutes for these u 1, u 2 later on. For now u 1, u 2 will imagine somebody is giving me at the decoder some benevolent person is giving me what u 1 and u 2 are and I am imagining this second third bit channel. So, likewise you can proceed. What do I do for the ith bit? For the bit channel i, I will imagine that the entire receipt vector is there. That is not very hard to imagine. I have the entire receipt vector. But then I will also imagine I have the, all the previous bits that were transmitted. So, u 1 to u i minus 1, I already have at the output. This will be what I will imagine. Okay? So, likewise I will go all the way up to the nth bit channel which has all the received values that is ok and then all the previous bits. Okay. So, now what is special about this split channels? What is special about these uh, bit channels is these bit channels are not similar at all. Okay. They are very, very, very different from each other over I mean if you view the whole picture they are all very different in quality. In the previous case all the channels here all the channels for which you received R 1 are the same. Here these n channels will have very different behavior. Okay. So, you can imagine why right. So, first of all these channels are very different from the previous channels. Okay. They have one bit input, but the outputs are huge okay. and also you are you are assuming the previous bits are available. So, they can be very different in quality and uh, and that is true. Okay. So, it turns out you can study these bit channels very carefully and you can sort of order them based on quality okay. and the quality you can show varies a lot from very good to very bad. Okay. And it turns out as you increase n, they either become very, 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 very good or very, 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 very bad. There are literally no channels which are sort of mediocre, okay. neither very good nor very bad, okay. nothing in the middle, no middle path. All the bit channels either become very, very good or very, very bad. So, this is the essence of polarization. What does polarization mean? You either go to the north pole or the south pole, right? polarization, polar one of two things, nothing in the middle. Okay. So, that way these bit channels get polarized. Okay. They either become very, 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 very good or very, 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 very bad. Okay. So, these are called uh, this is called polarization. Uh, there is a wonderful information theoretic proof for this polarization for what type of channels it happens and all that. And once again, we will not study that at least in this course, maybe later on we will add some additional content for this. But for now, we will just look at how to use this polarization to define polar codes and how to do use this polarization to design decoders for polar codes okay, and achieve good performance. That will be the focus of the lectures in this course, but this idea is very central. Uh, but keep uh, note of this not having the real output and what do we do for that? We will postpone this discussion when we come to the decoder. For now, we will use this idea of polarization and start talking about how to define polar codes. Okay. We will come to this notion of how to recreate this u1 at the output side uh, later on. Okay. So, now the next important idea is that of a reliability sequence. So, okay. so, I mentioned how after polarization if you take the bits you polarize them and transmit them one after the other on the BPSK AWGN channel there is a lot of polarization. Okay. Some bits become some bit channels and then you can define these clever bit channels which have previous inputs. If you do that then some channels become very very good some channels become very very bad. Now, which channels are good which channels are bad? Okay. That is given by the reliability sequence. This tells you the ordering of channels, ordering of bit channels from worst to best. Okay, which is the worst among these n, n bit channels, and which is the best among these first bit channels? I am giving you the reliability sequence as per the 5G standard. Okay, now there are multiple ways to create this reliability sequence and uh, there are lots of research going on and how accurately you can find the reliability sequence, uh, how realistic it is etcetera, etcetera. All of that uh, we are not going to go into great detail, but we will simply provide the final answer. Okay. So, it turns out for n equals 8 according to the 5G standard the reliability sequence is this. Okay. 1 the bit channel 1 is the worst channel, next comes 2, okay. after that is 3, after that is 5, after that is 4, then 6, 7, 8. So, it is not the same order as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you see this 2 got switched for n equals 8. Okay. So, the fourth bit channel is better than the fifth bit channel according to this reliability sequencing. 
Okay. So, like I said the way in which you do this is uh, not very precise, it is sort of it involves some simulations and all that. Uh, maybe I will point you to some references in uh, if you are interested in reading about how to find this reliability sequence, uh, but in these lectures we would not focus on how to find this reliability sequence, we will just think about how to use them for designing for encoding and decoding polar codes. Okay. So, here is the reliability sequence for uh, n equals 16, so you see this 1, 2, 3, 5 comes again and then suddenly 9 comes. Okay. 9 becomes a bad channel, then you have 4, 6, 10, uh, this is the sequence. Okay. So, for instance, a 14th channel, 14th bit channel is uh, better than the 12th bit channel, the 8th bit channel is worse than the 12th bit channel like that, that is how you read it. This is the sequence in which the quality of the channels is ordered, there are 16 bit channels, they are ordered like this. This is for n equals 32. Remember all these numbers like I said, I am pulling from the 5G standard, the 5G standard specifies this for n equals 1024. Okay and sequence for smaller n is derived from the sequence for n0 n equals 1024. Okay. So, I am just picking it up from there. Okay. Uh, so, you can also do this if you have access to the 5G standard, you can go pick up the reliability sequence for 1024 and then from that find the subsequences which are for n equals 8, 16, 32 and all that. Okay. So, what is the final summary? Uh, once you do the polar transform and transmit on the PPS KWGN channel for instance or any other channel for that matter, we can take a global sort of reliability sequence the bit and then create these bit channels. The bit channels become polarized and they, they can be ordered from the worst to the best and the sequencing is sort of given here. Okay. You can take one sequencing. How do you find the sequencing? We are not going into details there, but the final answer is given to you. Okay. So, this is the sequencing. All right. So, this is uh, the notion of reliability sequence, uh, it is very crucial for uh, designing and defining polar codes, it is very important. Okay. So, here is the full reliability sequence for n equals 1024, I am not expecting you to uh, learn this by heart, you do not have to do this, you do not have to uh, mug up this sequence, but this is the sequence, it is given in the standard and you can see how it goes, there is no, there is no pattern here, right. So, it is sort of uh, uh, sort of random in some sense, but not all that random, it sort of increases from 1 to 1024 in some generic way, but suddenly you will have some big numbers showing up in early on, right. So, it is sort of difficult to predict, there is no real pattern here uh, as far as at least I know there is no pattern here, uh, it is hard to come up with uh, these estimates and also uh, you, you, you might if you read more you will see if the noise variance changes in the AWGN channel, this uh, reliability sequence actually changes. So, it is it actually changes, so it is hard to pick up one reliability sequence uh, for a wide range of uh, noise variances, but people use some um, close simulation studies and carefully study it and come up with something like this. Okay. So, the reliability sequence is a difficult thing to find, okay. it is not very easy to find. There are good methods available today in the literature, but uh, like I said even if you find it strictly it will vary from noise variance to noise variance and it is not sort of contained, uh, for many cases it is not contained, some cases it is contained. So, so you can use some approximations and there is a structure, but it is a very hotly researched topic today. Okay. So, reliability sequence uh, is important, but for us uh, we are not going to focus too much on the difficulties around the reliability sequence, we will simply take the one that is given in the standard and be happy about it. Okay. So, if you are doing that there is no problem. Okay. So, having done all this work, having studied the polarization, having studied these bit channels, having, having understood what the definition of this reliability sequence is, we are ready to define the polar code. Okay. So, n k polar code is defined for n equals 2 power n okay. and the small n could be, I mean usually you want to start at 4, I mean sorry 2 at least, 2, 3 so on. Okay. The message m is of length k bits and this k is going to be less than or equal to n. Okay. Message m is of length k bits, that is ok. What do you do to define the polar code? I will define the encoder for polar code. Okay. This is the encoder for the n k polar code. I will form a vector u of length n bits. Okay. How do I form that? I will first find the n minus k least reliable or worst channels from the reliability sequence. Okay. There is a reliability sequence. What is the first n minus k least reliable? The first n minus k uh, numbers in the sequence 
is the least reliable right so you take the n minus k least reliable and i will set the ui for these n minus k channels to zero okay so so i'm saying channels here remember these are like n minus k positions okay the first n minus k least reliable positions as per the least reliability sequence you set those ui to be equal to zero remember ui has length n okay the first n minus k positions whatever they are you set them to zero okay the ui corresponding to the first n minus k positions in the reliability sequence remember it's not in the same order the order sometimes changes you set those to zero now there will be k remaining positions for you okay the k remaining positions you set them to be equal to the message okay all right so you have this ve vector u okay it has n positions 1 2 so on till n okay the n minus k least reliable positions you put 0 okay so you'll put 0 here you put 0 here wherever they are least reliable you put 0 okay and then the remaining guys you put message k most reliable so least and most are with respect to the reliability sequence okay so there you put your messages messages go there okay so you form a vector u like this and then what is the code word code word is simply the polar transform of u okay u times g n polar transform of u is it okay that's the definition for the n k polar code for any n you can do this once you have a reliability sequence you have a polar code right so it's as simple as that right so hopefully this is uh, clear we started with the 2 by 2 polar kernel we created the gn polar kernel then we looked at the polarization property and then we define the reliability sequence once you define the reliability sequence you have a polar code okay so that's it here are a few examples i'm starting with n equals 8 small n equals 3 okay and defining the 8 comma 4 polar code this is the reliability sequence so the frozen positions the ones for which you choose them to be zero these are called the frozen positions okay so once again i think i, I missed defining that the the least reliable n minus k least reliable channels which you set to zero are called the frozen positions okay and then the remaining are message positions okay so if you do a 8 4 code reliability sequence is 1 2 3 5 4 6 7 8 so the frozen positions are 1 2 3 5 okay the message is 4 6 7 8 okay so how do you visualize the polar code construction you can go back to the binary tree representation of the polar transform okay and 1 2 3 and 5 you set as 0 so this is all frozen okay i'll write f here to indicate that these are frozen and then write m here to indicate these are message okay so the first second third and fifth uh, leaf uh, nodes are frozen to 0 the remaining are set to m1 m2 m3 m4 now how will this encoding happen you will do uh, 0 here 0 here and you will get a 0 0 here right 0 0 goes to 0 0 you get 0 here m1 here and you will get m1 m1 here right so 0 is coming here m1 is coming here so 0 plus m1 is m1 then m1 itself is written here likewise you have 0 m2 so this will be m2 m2 okay this is m3 m4 so you will have m3 plus m4 m4 okay then what will happen in the next step this will this is 0 0 m1 m1 so this 4 bit vector will be m1 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 this will be m2 plus m3 plus m4 m2 plus m4 m3 plus m4 and then m4 right so that's what happens at this node you combine m2 m2 and m3 plus m4 m4 you take the xor of these two keep it here and then this is retained as it is okay so remember this is retained as it is the xor of these two goes here okay that's what happened uh, in this and then uh, finally the code word 8 bit code word is going to be again xor of these two and then this retained as it is right so let me write it out laboriously for you m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 m1 plus m2 plus m4 m1 plus m3 plus m4 m1 plus m4 
and the remaining 4 are the exact same things as this m 2 plus m 3 plus m 4 m 2 plus m 4 m 3 plus m 4 and m 4. This is the encoded version. So, this is the input to the transform and this is the output of the transform and that is the code word. Okay, so, this is the code word. Okay. So, you have a message m which is m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4, m is m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4 and the code word is this. Okay, remember plus again is XOR or modular 2 addition, you do all these things. Okay. So, if you want you can create a generator matrix out of this, you will get I mean this easily specifies a generator matrix. Okay. Uh, you, you can construct that if you like. Okay. You will get a 4 by 8 generator matrix and you notice this is not a systematic encoding. is not it m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4 does not appear by itself in the code word, it is not systematic, but this is the encoding that you have. Okay. So, once you fix uh, length and the number of message bits and once you have a reliability sequence, you can always do polar encoding and this tree representation gives you a very simple way in which uh, you can implement the encoding as well. I am going to give a few more examples, here is a 16 comma 10 example. Okay. So, for n equals 16, the reliability sequence is this and uh, you have to freeze the first 6 positions, right. So, first 1, 2, 3, 5, 9 and 4 will get frozen. In your uh, tree, you have 16 leaf nodes, the first node, second node, third node, fifth, fourth and then ninth are going to be set as 0. The message will go into the remaining place and then you will start encoding as before, you will get the code word at the output. Okay, the code word, each bit of the code word will be some XOR of some M1, M2, M3 like that. If you want, you can write out a generator matrix for that and you have the definition for a 16 comma 10 polar code. Okay. The same thing happens for 32. Okay. There is nothing different about it, N equals 32. So, and 20 is the K. So, you have to freeze the first 12 positions, you go all the way up to 11. So, what are the frozen positions? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then you have 9, 10, 11, 17 and 18. Okay. So, some sort of numbers there, they get frozen to 0, remaining have the message bits, once again you can combine and create a uh, generator matrix if you like. Okay. So, in fact, viewing the uh, fr freezing as in u times g n is also quite easy. Okay. So, this is the polar transform, you look at the non frozen positions in u and the rows corresponding to g n and that, that will give you the generator matrix. Okay. So, that is a quick way to generate, come up with the generator matrix for the polar code. Okay. So, this is an uh, example and here is uh, for 16 comma 10 a full blown uh, binary uh, uh, tree representation. I am not going to go through and show you the computation, but this is what happens. You have frozen bits uh, 0 and then the message bits uh, 10 of them and they combine and you create the 16 bit code word. Remember once again, these are all 1 bit here, these are all will be 2 bits right? and then you have 4 bits then you have 8 bits here okay, and then finally, you will have 16 bit code word. Okay. So, that is it, that is the polar code and even if you have a, so you can imagine if you have n equals 1024 and k equals 512, what do you do? Okay. You go back to that big slide I showed you. Okay, this is n equals 1024 and k equals 512. What will you do? You take this big uh, vector and then mark out the first 512 positions and make them frozen and imagine this tree and on the leaf you freeze all of them, set them to 0, put the message bits in the remaining places and then do the encoding. Okay. I mean it is hard to do it by hand, but you can write a quick program and uh, that will work quite fast. Okay. So, that is the end of the description of the polar code. Hopefully, this was clear to you. Uh, once again, the important things to focus on are the polar transform, this notion of bit channels, how we define them and uh, how uh, the reliability sequence is defined. That is very, very crucial and once you have a reliability sequence, you have a polar code. Okay. Once, you for, once you have it for any n, it is a, sequ uh, it is a polar code. Okay. So, n comma k polar code, you, f you have frozen positions and message positions, you freeze the first n minus k and you put your messages in the remaining k. Okay. That is the end of this lecture on polar codes. In the next lecture, we will see uh, uh, MATLAB uh, 
programming for uh, writing a quick encoder. Once again, we will write a very simple and uh, encoder that works for doing the polar encoding. Okay, thank you very much.